H Res 1117 opposing efforts to place one-sided pressure on Israel with respect to Gaza. Um, I would like to welcome our third panel, Representative Klein and Ranking Member Nadler from the Committee on Judiciary. Representative Klein, I welcome your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm here to testify today regarding HRES 1112, denouncing the Biden administration's immigration policies. Just over three years ago, Joe Biden took office as President of the United States and immediately began upholding his campaign promises to reverse the Trump administration's immigration policies. On day one, the President issued executive orders that sent the world a message that America's borders are open. He used his executive authority to stop border wall construction, rescind the Remain in Mexico policy, prevent the removal of any illegal alien, and block ICE and CPB from enforcing immigration laws. In the weeks and months that followed, President Biden terminated Trump-era policies aimed at preventing fraudulent asylum claims, ending catch and release, increasing criminal alien removals, and preventing illegal immigration. And what was the result of Biden's radical and dangerous systematic dismantling of policies that worked to reduce and prevent illegal immigration? Why, the biggest mass illegal immigration wave in the history of the United States. More than 8 million illegal aliens have been encountered by Customs and Border Protection on the southwest border, approximately the population of my home state, the Commonwealth of Virginia. There have been 38 straight months with more than 100,000 southwest border CPB encounters. The Biden administration has released more than 4.6 million illegal aliens into American communities, in addition to the 1.8 million known gotaways avoiding apprehension. And that's just those we know. At least 350 illegal aliens on the terrorist watch list have been encountered by Border Patrol along the southwest border. At the same time, the Biden administration has sharply reduced the number of removals of aliens from this country, including removals of convicted criminal aliens. Who could have predicted these results? Well, Trump administration officials did for one, and congressional Republicans did for another, and career CBP and other DHS employees did. They even warned the Biden transition team not to rescind policies like migrant protection protocols and Title 42. But politics trumped common sense. And the American people are left with the national security, public safety, and financial disaster that the Biden administration's immigration agenda has wrought. After three years of chaos, the Biden administration seems to have finally gotten the message that Americans get uneasy when they see mobs of illegal aliens beating up New York City police officers watch endless numbers of illegal aliens stream across the southwest border, and hear the heart-wrenching details of murders like that of 22-year-old nursing student Lake and Riley by illegal aliens who should not have been here in the first place. So after three years and with an election on the horizon, President Biden's handlers have decided that the time is now to finally admit what is happening on the southwest border is indeed a crisis, and it's time to blame Congress. But the American people know better. They know that if President Trump was able to establish the most secure border in American history, despite open border groups rushing to get his immigration policies enjoined by activist courts at every turn, then Joe Biden could also use executive authority to help secure the border. They know that President Biden simply refuses to take action. President Biden knows it too, but he refuses to act because open borders advocates have told him not to do so. Months ago, the president announced he would take executive action to quell the border crisis created by his policies. But instead, President Biden continues to sell out the American people by cowering to the far left fringes of his party, the radicals who insist that even the meekest and most minor of reforms are, quote, extreme, inhumane, and cruel. Indeed, President Biden refuses to re-implement the migrant protection protocols to stop abusing discretionary case-by-case -case and other parole authority and to re-implement President Trump's asylum cooperative agreements so we can remove illegal aliens seeking asylum to third countries. President Biden refuses to expand the use of expedited removal, refuses to use 212F authority to suspend the entry of aliens to secure the border, and refuses to end catch and release. President Biden refuses to comply with the mandatory detention statutes of the Immigration and Nationality Act for inadmissible aliens, and he refuses to rein in the use of taxpayer-funded benefits for illegal aliens. The American people can see that President Biden's approach stands in stark contrast to that of President Trump, who only refused to give up on who only refused to give up on securing our border. Instead of using his authority to fix his border disaster, President Biden touts the failed Senate border deal, the same failed Senate border deal 
that was denounced by rank and file border patrol agents who rightly said the bill would only continue and indeed codify the president's catch and release policies. The same failed Senate border deal that would not have secured the border. You don't have to take my word for it. Senator Murphy, one of the architects of the deal, said it himself. According to him, under the Senate deal, quote, the border never closes. Or you can simply read the bill yourself, which states that the illegal alien subject to its provisions, quote, shall be released. To the everyday American, the answer to the border crisis is simple. Secure the border and enforce the law. That's what the Trump administration did. That's what America needs. And that is what President Biden refuses to do. HRES 1112 affirms that President Biden has the executive authority to help control the border, affirms that the Biden administration is refusing to use that authority, and urges President Biden to immediately begin using that executive authority. HR 2, the Secure the Border Act, as passed by the House, would enhance current law to help ensure the border is controlled. Senate Democrats have been refusing to bring that bill to the Senate floor for almost a year now. In the meantime, President Biden should use his executive authority to ensure the national security and public safety of Americans is paramount. He should use it to help secure the border. Thank you, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Um, and I won't say welcome to the committee because you've been here almost as long as I have so, uh, today. <laughs> so, um, but I welcome your testimony, Mr. Nandler. Thank you. Madam Chair, Ranking Member McGovern, thank you for the opportunity to testify today on this resolution. Madam Chair, this country is facing real problems. There is an erosion of trust in our government and institutions. The right to bodily autonomy is under attack across the nation. Our ally Ukraine is in desperate need of additional aid so it can defeat Putin's unlawful invasion. The state of Maryland needs assistance in rebuilding the Francis Scott Key Bridge so that the Port of Baltimore, whose economic impact touches communities across the country, can reopen. And our immigration system cannot function because Congress has failed to reform it for over 30 years. But instead of responding to these problems, House Republicans are wasting our time yet again on another meaningless immigration resolution. At Donald Trump's direction, they refuse to work towards solutions for our broken immigration system. So instead, all they have to offer is a bunch of empty rhetoric. This resolution, like the others we have considered in recent months, will do nothing to solve the situation at the border. Not a single dollar will go to help our law enforcement agents at the border as a result of this resolution. Not a single person will be denied unlawful entry to this country as a result of this resolution. Not a single community will be made safer as a result of this resolution. This resolution is nothing more than a highlight reel of the dubious talking points in immigration that we have heard over and over from Republicans since President Biden was sworn into office. It is the same legislating by press release that we, that we have become accustomed to in this historically unproductive Congress. The resolution itself is simply a rehash of the resolution we passed just last month. Republicans are so out of ideas that it even has the same title as the last resolution. That resolution listed all the ways that President Biden supposedly could secure the border and essentially asked the administration to reverse every policy it has implemented in immigration, even though we know that doing so would not be effective. Today's resolution simply lists most of those policies again, and this time it just condemns the administration. What a waste of time. It is important to remember how we got here. Earlier this Congress, House Republicans passed their partisan, cruel, and unworkable border bill, H.R. 2. Republicans spent a year saying that H.R. 2 is the only way to secure the border, even though they know that it cannot become law, having failed twice to pass the Senate, receiving just 32 votes earlier this year in a body with 49 Republican senators. Then they insisted that the price of helping protect Ukraine against Russian aggression was enacting harsh border enforcement legislation. Senate Republicans even managed to convince some Democrats to agree to a border bill in the Senate, a bill that Minority Leader McConnell called the toughest border bill in 30 years, negotiated by one of the most conservative Republicans in the Senate, Jim Langford. But Republicans could not take yes for an answer. Donald Trump said that he didn't want to do anything that might help at the border in an election year because he wants immigration as a campaign issue. Other Republicans said it aloud too, saying they don't want to, quote, do too damn much to help a Democrat, unquote. Folding to the cult of Donald Trump, 
And just hours after the 370-page text of the bill was released, the Senate passed bill, Speaker Johnson declared the bill dead on arrival in the House, with the rest of the Republican conference quickly falling in line. The Republicans showed clearly what Democrats have been saying over and over again, that they don't want to do anything that would help address our broken immigration system. They clearly have given up. Instead of solving the problem, Republicans merely want to continue to weaponize the border as a political issue for the election year with pointless votes on meaningless resolutions that accomplish nothing and are full of misleading information. So let's review the facts once again. The resolution complains that the Biden administration is not removing enough people. However, the administration is removing people at a very significant pace and in ways that I am concerned may present some due process violations. Since the end of Title 42 last May, the Biden administration has removed or returned over 630,000 individuals and members of family units, 630,000. This is more than the number of people removed or returned in all of fiscal year 2019 under the Trump administration. The resolution also alleges that the Biden administration is violating the mandatory detention statutes by not detaining enough people. However, no administration, including the Trump administration, has ever been able to comply with those statutes because no Congress has ever appropriated the extraordinary levels of funding such compliance would require. To detain everyone that the law requires to be held in mandatory detention would require Congress to appropriate over $35 billion a year, a number 10 times higher than what Congress appropriated this year or that former President Trump ever requested for detention. And when Democrats are proposing giving DHS the resources to do its job, Republicans have consistently said no. So I'm not sure how anyone can say that the border is open or that this administration is not enforcing our laws. We need to work together to address our broken immigration system. Enforcement alone cannot fix it. We know this because an enforcement-only approach has largely failed for three decades. We need to update our immigration system so that it meets the needs of our country. We need a balanced bipartisan approach that expands lawful pathways. This will help relieve pressure on the border and allow people to come to this country in an orderly and efficient way. But Republicans don't want to engage in real legislating that might actually solve problems and deliver meaningful reform. They want to continue to demagogue and fearmonger with meaningless resolutions containing nothing but empty rhetoric designed to score cheap political points. I urge my colleagues to oppose this resolution, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, and I thank both of the witnesses. I have no question at this time, and so I will call on Vice Chair Burgess. Thank you, Ms. Fishbach. Um, thank you both for being here. Obviously, we've discussed this topic some de detail in the past. <clears throat> Representative Klein, one of my biggest concerns about the migrant protection protocols, the Biden administration early on after President Biden took office was to suspend the migrant protection protocols. He's told by the courts he couldn't do that, that he had to continue. And on a trip down to El Paso in January of 2022, I asked a question of the Customs and Border Protection about the reinstitution of the migrant protection protocols. And they said, let me give you an example. The last days of the Trump administration, we were returning uh, between 90 and 120 people, this was just in El Paso, 90 to 120 people back across the border to Mexico to be held. <clears throat> Even after the court said to President Biden, you couldn't do away with the migrant protection protocols, that you had to continue, it's more like three a day we're going back. There was no intention. There was no... I mean, it has to be a priority for the administration. So while I appreciate that you've brought this to us again, and I think it's extremely important, and I appreciate Representative Gonzalez for, for, for putting this resolution forward. I mean, let's be honest, until we change the administration, you can't get anything done because the administration has no intention of enforcing the law. And I don't know why they don't want to defend their own border. I'm, I'm, I'm mystified why they will not defend their own border, but they clearly do not want to. This is not an immigration problem. This is a border security problem. We've been over it and over it and over it. The problem is 
problem was at the White House, the problem continues to be at the White House, and until we change the administration, we're not going to fix this problem. I hope people are paying attention. I yield back. I would recognize uh, Ranking Member McGovern. Well, I have a different view than uh, Dr. Burgess. Uh, I think we need to change Congress because my Republican friends are good about complaining and whining, uh, but not very good about solving any problems. The gentleman mentions that uh, he didn't like the uh, Senate Compromise Bill that was negotiated by the second most conservative Republican in the United States Senate. Uh, the fact of the matter is, the only reason why we didn't debate and vote on it is because, as Mr. Nadler pointed out, the man that you all feared, Donald Trump, called and said, please don't bring it up. Uh, I, I want the issue. I don't want you to solve the problem. Uh, and by the way, um, it, 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 the H.R. 2, which you all seem to be so enamored with, uh, when there was a move in the Senate to actually bring it up, it got 32 votes. 32 votes. So not just Democrats, but Republicans. I think maybe, you know, my Republican friends need to understand that we have divided government. Uh, and that while you control the House ever so slightly, Democrats control the Senate ever so slightly, and we have a Democrat in the White House. And the idea that it's my way or the highway all the time, um, and therefore it's, it's just fine for Republicans to, to do nothing about the border, means, as I said earlier, you own this issue now. This is your issue. Um, and, um, and I regret that. Mr. Uh, Mr. Nadler, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this resolution <coughs> because I, you know, I, I'm... And I, um, and I feel like I'm having deja vu, uh, or maybe more accurately, a recurring nightmare. Um, you know, didn't we just do a partisan Republican resolution, quote, denouncing the Biden administration's immigration policies, end quote, because I remember Republicans wasting our time with a resolution with the same exact title less than a month ago. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, Mr. McGovern, we had the exact same resolution. In fact, it was a cut and paste job. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm looking up to 32 whereas clauses. 13 are identical to the waste of time resolution we did last month. As I said, it was a yeah. cut and paste job. Yeah. And another, you know, and 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 three others are nearly identical. So, so that means not only are we doing another non non binding resolution because am I correct? If this were to pass, no laws change, no correct. additional money goes to the border patrol. No additional money goes to judges to adjudicate. I mean, nothing really changes. Nothing like really changes. Right. This is a purely political stunt. So, so we're, I mean, you could do a one-minute speech and have the same impact as doing this on the floor. I mean, this, yes. because it, it's, it's, it's a press release. So this is just one more of the same from this Republican majority. No new ideas, uh, no idea on how to govern, no idea on any solutions. I mean, Ranking Member Nadler, other than continuing to do this absurd nonsense that accomplishes nothing. Is there anything else that your committee could be working on uh, and bringing up, bring to the floor that will actually help uh, the American people on this matter? Well, there is one thing, and that is FISA. Right. And uh, I hope that that, uh, and we, we, we were at, at this committee uh, earlier today with FISA, and uh, I don't know if that's going to, if, if, if uh, the renewal is going to pass or not. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think of all the issues that, you know, that are before us that we could actually do something about, including on border security. I mean, I mean, Democrats and Republicans in the Senate came together. The second most conservative Republican in the United States Senate came forward with an idea. Maybe it's not perfect, but the idea is that my Republican friends in the House would rather do nothing other than bring non-binding resolutions to the floor time and time and time again. This place is becoming a joke. Um, and quite frankly, these are matters that deserve serious and thoughtful attention and serious, thoughtful legislation. And this is not it. Yes. And in fact, uh, uh, Mr. McGovern, uh, it was not too long ago that uh, uh, Chip Roy said that this Congress had accomplished nothing at all. And he was right. And I, you know, and, and I, I can't believe I'm saying I, I actually agree with Chip Roy on that. I don't agree with him on anything, but I will agree with him on that, that that, uh, you know, that, uh, I mean, this has been a, a total waste of time. And again, it, yeah, I always tell people, you don't have to agree on everything to agree on something. Um, and there are some things that we can come together and agree on, uh, on border security that we can get done immediately. Um, and my uh, Republican friends choose instead to basically 
do a press release. Um, I, I don't. I mean, this is the same thing we've done before, so I will yield back my time. Thank you. Um, I would recognize Mr. Massey. I have no questions. Mrs. Scanlon. Um, yeah, as was just noted, this isn't just the second time we've had this resolution. It's the third time. So in January, there was a resolution denouncing the Biden administration's border policy. And then in March, we had another resolution denouncing the Biden administration's border policy. And now we have this one. We get it. You don't like President Biden and you don't like the border policy and you have no intention of actually passing a border security bill. So and we have to pass the same resolution every other month. Right. Well, that's because nothing else is happening. Um, but I, I do appreciate your coming to testify yet again. And I don't appreciate the fact that we're wasting so much valuable time and taxpayer dollars on this nonsense. I yield back. Thank you. And I don't believe there is anyone else who wishes to ask questions. So thank you for appearing before us today. And uh, the witnesses are excused. Yeah.